The Republic XF-84H was probably the noisiest and most trouble-filled aircraft ever built. The shockwave was so strong that it could knock a man down, causing severe headaches and nausea among ground personnel. Care for the details of this rather amazing aircraft? Stick with me till the end of the video. Let's dive into it. First, what made the Republic XF-84H so loud? The aviation industry's transition from propellers to jet engines saw the emergence of a new type of engine called a turboprop, a turbocharged engine that, instead of generating exhaust thrust, drives a propeller. In 1955, the United States Air Force developed an experimental aircraft called the XF-84H, manufactured by Republic Aviation. The purpose of the XF-84H was to determine whether it was possible for a fighter jet to get rid of the catapult and take off from an aircraft carrier on its own. The turboprop engine was chosen to propel the aircraft because such an engine uses large fans to move large volumes of air, which allows the aircraft to produce greater thrust at lower speeds. Greater thrust means faster acceleration, which translates to shorter takeoffs. The the XF-84H was based on the well-known inclined-wing F-84 Thunderstreak, but instead of a jet engine, it was fitted with a 5,850-horsepower Allison XT-40A1 turboprop engine that turned three steel blades. With a sweep of 12 feet, the blades were so long that even with idling thrust, the tip of the blades moved at supersonic speeds, providing a continuous visible sonic boom that could be heard 40 kilometers away. The shockwaves were so powerful that they could knock a grown man down. Henry Baird, a test pilot at the time and one of the only men to fly the XF-84H recalled that one fateful day, the crew took it to an isolated test area at Edwards Air Force Base, California to operate it. They tied it up on a taxiway next to what they assumed was an empty C-47, but the plane's crew chief was inside sweeping. So they turned on that XF-84H, accelerated on the ground for about 30 minutes, and turned it off. As they prepared to tow it back to the ramp, they heard a thump from the back of the C-47. It was the crew chief knocked out by the high-intensity noise and, on his back on the floor of the plane, passed out. Well, the good news is that he ended up recovering. According to Henry, as long as you stayed in front or behind the plane, it really wasn't that bad. But if you got within range of the propeller, it would shoot you down. Really, that's insane. The horrendous noise of the XF-84H gave the aircraft the nickname Thunder Screech. Its engine ran at full speed at all times, and the propeller rotated at 2100 RPM from startup to shutdown. This, of course, was the source of the horrendous noise. Thrust was obtained and adjusted by changing the pitch control of the propellers, and the response was instantaneous. Along with the already considerable noise from the subsonic aspect of the T-40's propeller and dual turbine sections, the aircraft was known to cause severe nausea and headaches among ground crews. In one report, a Republic Aviation engineer suffered a seizure after close-range exposure to shockwaves emanating from a powered-on XF-84H. On the day they had to tow the aircraft to a runway that was on the side of a lake, far from the flight line, before starting the engine again, Edward von Wolfersdorf, Henry's crew chief, recalled doing his first land runs with the aircraft at the main base, and was wondering why they're flashing a red light at him in the control tower. It turns out they couldn't hear absolutely anything on their radios, so they kicked them out and sent them to the north base. Edwards feared that the shockwave from the propellers would shatter the windows of the control tower, located about a kilometer from the runway, and to avoid injuries from an exploding window, whenever the XF-84H was flying, traffic controllers would crawl in to their desks with their radios and cover themselves with blankets. It's sad that nobody ever recorded the decibels due to fear that the measuring device would break. Would you have dared to measure the decibels if you were involved? I bet not. The XF-84H was never much appreciated at Edwards Air Force Base, and it wasn't just for the noise. The XF-84H was an impractical machine that took half an hour just to warm up and clear for takeoff, which made it clearly unsuitable for combat. More than noise or delays, it was just the mechanical problems that led to its destruction. The XF-84H suffered from vibrations from the supersonic propellers and the powerful torque the engine produced. Lynn Hendricks, one of the test pilots assigned to the program, flew the aircraft once and refused to fly it again. He told Republic Aviation Project Manager Jim Rust, a big, muscular man at 1.95 meters and 106 kilograms, that he's not big enough and there's not enough of them to put him in that thing again. He continued that he's never getting up on that shit again. I definitely would have reacted the same way if I was in his shoes. Here's another pilot's experience and what his reaction was. The fearless Henry Baird flew that machine 11 times, and 10 of those flights ended in a crash landing. Damn, this plane will end up hurting someone, he said once after an emergency landing. I must admit, Henry Baird is really a fearless man. I wouldn't dare. Would you have flown it more than once? Let me know in the comments section. In the end, nobody wanted anything to do with the aircraft. First, the Navy backed off, and then the Air Force canceled the project after only two XF-84Hs were built with a total flight time of less than 10 hours between them. The XF-84H is widely considered to be the fastest propeller propelled aircraft ever built, with an official top speed of 1,080 km per 
per hour, as predicted by Republic, although the plane never exceeded 700 kilometers per hour. But in fact, that speed record was already held by the massive four-engine, eight-propeller Tupolev 295 Bear Soviet bomber, which, with its high cruising speed of 880 kilometers per hour, remains by far the most propeller-driven aircraft fastest in the world. Next up, let's talk about the top loudest aircraft ever built. The beginning of aviation brought some rather loud, disastrous planes, which did not work properly, causing huge losses and even accidents. Until airplanes improved as we see them today, it took many tests, designs, and calculations by hundreds of engineers. Among the many loud aircrafts that were not considered successful, for various reasons, we'll discuss some of the most outstanding ones. The first one on our list is PZL M15. The Polish PZL M15 aircraft is probably one of the the weirdest models ever developed, characterized by being the only biplane agricultural jet aircraft in the world. In the 1970s, Soviet authorities felt the need to replace their agricultural fleets with newer, more economical models capable of spraying collective farms more efficiently. The PZL M15 was designed in this context by the Poles under the order of the USSR. Among the demands made by the Soviets was the fact that the aircraft had to use a jet engine, something that had been unheard of in aircraft of that type until then. With the right aerodynamics applied, giving that peculiar look, the M15 could fly 100 miles per hour, one of the slowest jet planes in the world. The next is the Vought F7U Cutlass. Designed to modernize the US Navy, the F7U Cutlass turned out to be a dangerous and low reliability aircraft, presenting numerous problems already in its tests. Several pilots lost their lives due to F7U Cutlass errors until they were identified and corrected. This plane had a very unique design for the period, with larger wings that replaced the standard tail, supposedly providing greater stability, something that did not materialize. Next up, Bristol 188. The Bristol 188 was a very daring supersonic aircraft designed to impress with its futuristic look. UK Royal Air Force commanders wanted the plane to reach an impressive speed of Mach 2.6, approximately 3,000 kilometers per hour, which would cause the outside of the aircraft to exceed more than 300 degrees Celsius. That's why the Bristol 188 was built using the most modern techniques of the time, with a stainless steel fuselage and a narrow, elongated design. However, from the beginning, it had serious engineering problems. The tanks could not hold fuel during the flight. Leaks were constant, causing flight time to be drastically limited. Furthermore, controlling the Bristol 188 properly was considered extremely complex, even for experienced pilots. Let's wrap it up with the Bade 152. The Bade 152 was the first German passenger jet aircraft, a project spearheaded by East Germany. However, it did not even go into commercial operation. Built in Dresden between 1956 and 1961, the Bade 152 had three prototypes presented to the public only two of which actually flew in tests. A curious aspect is that the design of the Bade 152 was inspired by several aircraft concepts from the 1940s, and that is why it appears to be, visually speaking, more of a military aircraft than a commercial one. So that concludes today's video. If you found the video helpful, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to share the video with your friends. Also, let me know in the comment section what you think of the world's loudest plane. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.